Um, so this uh, uh, this work uh, was done back uh, when I was still uh, in Tübingen with my supervisor, former supervisor Matthias Sein. Uh, so we have heard uh, about uh, like adversarial attacks in the previous two talks. Uh, a bit like most of the works on uh, on uh, at least in com computer vision for about adversarial attacks are on image classifiers. All right, so we just have some image we want to decide what's inside and so on. But like another like very important task in a computer vision is the segmentation. Right, so you have an image and you want to uh, yeah segment some objects. And there are several like variations of uh, these tasks. And we can think about uh, adversarial attacks also on these tasks. Uh, so in, in general, we want to, to just uh, change the predicted uh, mask for, 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 for the same object, right? And um, okay, now, uh, so back uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, we were just like uh, for each task and for each data set, we were training models uh, and we had a, a specific model uh, for uh, a specific task. Now we are moving toward uh, foundation models and uh, there are uh, several, uh, a few uh, foundation models for segmentation uh, appearing. And uh, we want, in this work, we want to test the robustness of, uh, of these models uh, against adversarial attacks, and especially um, uh, how easy and uh, how cheap it is to produce these uh, adversarial attacks. Uh, so how these models work, uh, work uh, these foundation models for segmentation, basically they are general purpose in the sense that they can solve several tasks, right? For example, uh, like uh, uh, this on the left, you have an image and you want to segment everything inside the image. So for, uh, for uh, you want uh, to have uh, masks for every object, right? You don't care to assign uh, classes uh, to, these, uh, to these objects, but you just want to have these um, uh, colorful masks, right? So each, each color is like a different object. So the model recognizes uh, uh, different objects. And uh, then you have like semantic segmentation, it's basically the same, but you want to also assign classes to each of, of these masks, like sky, uh, ground, and so on. Uh, and the second uh, aspect of, of these foundation models is that they are promptable. So uh, the user can ab adapt uh, the, the same model to different tasks just by giving different prompts. And there are different modalities of prompts, like uh, uh, points, uh, boxes, uh, like general, generic shapes or even text, so there are more like also audio, like vocal uh, prompts. And uh, then you have uh, an image and the model uh, itself uh, like combines these prompts with the image and it returns uh, uh, segmentation. Like for example, uh, here you have uh, the user uh, has given just uh, like this uh, point prompt and the model returns the segmentation for, for, for the animal. Uh, and the same here, it's just, um, yeah, uh, some uh, scribble, and uh, you want to uh, segment the entire city. Right? And um, uh, one nice application of this is uh, interactive segmentation, so that you have some kind of web page, and the user can go and uh, give one prompt, and if the segmentation, uh, uh, the proposed mask is not what uh, uh, they want, they can just give another prompt, uh, and this is uh, very, very fast, right? Okay, and these models are like uh, becoming pretty popular because they can be in, like integrated in several downstream tasks, right? Uh, so the two uh, most relevant works at the moment uh, are like uh, the segment anything model uh, from Meta and um, uh, so Sam, and this is a segment everything everywhere all at once, or sim. And uh, are, the structure, the architecture of these models is uh, pretty similar. Um, so they have uh, a vision encoder uh, so this one, which uh, is just like a model which uh, uh, encodes, uh, gives some embeddings for uh, an input image. And uh, then you have uh, like one or more prompt encoders, right? So which uh, take uh, different prompts for, from the user and like project uh, basically to the same embedding space. Uh, and finally, you have a, a, a mask decoder, which uh, takes all these uh, embedding as, uh, as input and uh, returns some uh, one or more proposals for segmentation mask, right? So this is the general structure. And uh, the important part is, uh, uh, for our work at least, is uh, uh, that these uh, uh, different encoders are kind of uh, independent. So you can just, uh, the image encoder just uh, looks at uh, the image uh, and the prompt encoder just looks at the prompt and the mask encoder uh, it just uh, just depends on the, on the encoded uh, image and prompts. 
Um, yeah, and um, the other thing is that uh, here, uh, the, 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 by far the most expensive operation is uh, embedding the images. So because typically vision encoders are very large uh, networks like uh, VATs or others, but uh, people tend to use larger models because you get better results. Uh, while uh, compared to to to, this, uh, to encoding the image, encoding the prompts, or even producing uh, the proposed uh, masks is is uh, is very cheap. Uh, that's why you can do this interactive uh, segmentation uh, uh, basically online, uh, because uh, you the uh, image is encoded just once, and then you can up update your prompt uh, several times, and you get immediately your proposed mask. Right? Uh, okay. So the, the goal uh, of the adversary attacks in this case, um, as I said, is just to find a small uh, perturbation, like for, like in, in uh, image classification, which uh, allows more perturbation delta that you can add to, the, to, the, to your image, and it's not really visible uh, to humans, uh, but lead to some incorrect masks, right? So here, um, there is no, uh, so for image classification, it's clear if the predicted class is right or wrong, for masks is uh, not that straightforward, or you can, Imagine different measures, right? But in, in, in visually, it's very clear if the mask is right or wrong. Right? Uh, so what there are uh, a few attacks, uh, not many, on, on segmentation, and especially on um, attacks for these uh, foundation models. And uh, what they do is uh, basically they take uh, an image and a specific prompt, and they try to uh, maximize the difference between uh, the predicted mask uh, before and after the attack. Right, so the problem that we want to solve is that, uh, okay, they fix a budget for the perturbation, right, typically it's like a, some LP norm. Uh, in this work we use L infinity uh, so that the image is still, uh, in, like a perturbation is still imperceptible. Uh, and then what, uh, what you do is just you maximize uh, uh, some loss, uh, so which can be like uh, the, uh, the difference, uh, somehow captures the difference between the, the, the masks. Uh, um, so the loss between uh, the, the, the mask uh, uh, for the original image, so the unperturbed image, and the mask for, uh, for the image plus perturbation. But here, like, uh, the predictive mask uh, depends on the prompt, right, crucial. And okay, this uh, like works, right? Uh, but the, the problem, oh, the weakness is that uh, uh, this needs to be recomputed for any new prompt, right? So if uh, you have an attack which uh, works and you move uh, for, for one point prompt and then you move a bit your, your point prompt, it might not work anymore, right? And uh, so this is kind of uh, undesirable because it just takes more time to recompute. Right? So the idea of this work is uh, um, uh, testing if it's possible to get some prompt agnostic attacks. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea is that since the uh, um, image embedding given by the image encoder doesn't depend on uh, any prompt or any predictive mask. Uh, we can try to distort this as much as possible. And uh, if we distort it enough, uh, so we distort kind of the information it contains. So it, regardless of the prompt uh, is, uh, which is given by the user, it will not be useful uh, for, for predicting meaningful masks, right? Uh, so, uh, like, uh, technically, we rewrite the problem uh, uh, to, so that we maximize the L2 distance in the, in the feature space, the latent space, uh, between uh, the, the embedding um, uh, for uh, given by the image encoder, phi, uh, for the clean image, and uh, uh, the same for the perturbed image. Right? And we keep the, same, the constraints the same. Right? So here, uh, the, in, the, in this problem, we don't have any, any prompt and uh, any mask, predicted mask. So we don't care of, uh, of any predicted mask. Um, okay. So uh, like basically a summary is that uh, we use uh, exclusively, with, uh, our attacks exclusively target the, the image encoder. So basically just the part in the red box of the entire model, uh, whereas the other, um, like a standard tax use the, the entire end-to-end -end, uh, end um, model. And uh, we need uh, basically just uh, the image. We don't uh, need a prompt or masks. And uh, we can compute uh, these ones, uh, so because uh, we can uh, uh, find this uh, perturbation to kind of alter as much as possible the image embedding, and then we can see what happens when we give any, new, any prompt on top of this, right? 
so uh, you, you can reuse with uh, several times without any any costs. Basically. Uh, okay, some like the method is uh, for now is like pretty simple, right? We can just optimize like uh, solve. Uh, 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 this problem with uh, just uh, some kind of projected gradient descent and uh, with standard methods, right? We do for it L infinity, you, you just use uh, 100 steps, right? We, was, we want to keep this uh, um, chip, computation chip. And uh, the main, uh, the first task uh, we explore is uh, uh, the segment everything model of, of SAM. So basically, we just given an image, uh, we want to segment every object inside it. And uh, so the prompt, does, uh, the user doesn't give any prompt uh, explicitly, but the prompts are constructed inside the model itself automatically. Uh, and uh, so these are a set of images, uh, and these are the um, predicted masks uh, before, uh, before uh, any perturbation, right? And uh, uh, here are the predicted masks for uh, uh, when adding perturbations of size one over uh, 255, so like very small, uh, or two over two, uh, 255, which is also like small. Uh, it's not really perceptible for uh, most images or all images. And we see that basically uh, the, 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 the model is not able anymore to segment almost any, any object uh, inside the, these images. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, and this works, okay, if you go even at, like higher, uh, clearly you can destroy everything. Um, yes. So this was the first modality, right? The second uh, modality of, of SAM uh, is, uh, uh, the second we test is uh, uh, using single or multiple point prompts. Uh, so basically in this case, for example, we have uh, um, a, an image uh, this is the original one, and uh, we have this, uh, like the uh, green star is the mm, prompt uh, given by the user. So basically the user uh, says that uh, they want to segment the object containing uh, this prompt, this point, and in this case is like the building. And uh, then you can have um, like multiple of these, uh, of, of these prompts. And you can have also negative prompts, so the red stars. Uh, basically, it's uh, the same principles, just uh, in this case, the negative prompts say which uh, pixels do not belong to the object, which one wants to, to, to segment, in case to, defi to better define uh, like more complex objects, right? Um, and so on, you can have like uh, multiple uh, of, of uh, every type, right? Uh, and we see that, okay, when we have a single um, point prompt, okay, this is just a uh, quite an example, just one case, but we have more images in the paper. Uh, and we see basically um, like even very small perturbations are able to, to, to remove completely the mask, so here nothing basically segmented. Uh, then we, when we move towards more, uh, more uh, uh, like richer prompts, so more points, uh, then it, um, the same, um, so the, for small perturbations, some uh, uh, parts of the mask uh, are still retained, but when, but it's enough to move to uh, with the uh, to larger ready, right? So larger perturbations, and we still get basically no mask. Um, and eight over twenty fifty five is still a reasonable budget, uh, like I would say, uh, it's kind of standard. Um, yeah, and the thing is that here for uh, for uh, every image, right? We just generate one perturbation for, and the, the same perturbation is used across prompts. Right? Uh, so it's all idea. Uh, here we can do the same, right, for uh, for boxes. Uh, so in this case, the, the user just kind of gives the box uh, to identify the object uh, with, uh, of the subject, uh, which wants to be should be segmented. And uh, so boxes are a bit harder, right, uh, to fool because uh, kind of in some sense richer than prompt than points, uh, but still uh, works pretty well. And uh, like we saw that the, the predicted mask after the attack. It still belongs most of the times uh, uh, to the box, so it's inside the box, but it's kind of complementary to the true mask, right? So it's kind of the attack is uh, successful, and also it depends a bit uh, on the size of the box, so there are like quite consi uh, several considerations which can be done on on, uh, on uh, which types of prompts are more or less uh, vulnerable to attacks. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is uh, as another example with the seam in this case with the text prompts. So in this case we just say like give uh, uh, the name of uh, of what we want to to be segmented, 
and uh, like uh, grass tree sky and so on. And, uh, and we see that basically even in this case, even on another model and on another um, uh, like modality, prompt modality, uh, the results are pretty similar. So uh, in this case, uh, some cases, uh, um, uh, the mask doesn't disappear. So the model still predicts something, but which is completely like random. Oh, doesn't uh, have uh, anything to do with, uh, with the plane. Uh, yes, uh, so these were, there were some examples so just to see how it works. Uh, so more quantitative evaluation. Basically, we take uh, some uh, l like 100 images uh, from, from this uh, uh, data set, which is, was also introduced basically together with some. And uh, uh, these images are annotated with a lot of different uh, masks and prompts. So, and basically, we test our tax on uh, all of the possible masks and, and prompts. Uh, and uh, we compute the average uh, uh, intersection over union. So basically, the uh, intersection over union between the true mask or the original mask before perturbation, the uh, mask after perturbation. So basically, it's kind of a proxy for accuracy. So uh, higher numbers means better quality of segmentation. And uh, we try to test this across the type of prompts. And we see for clean images, uh, uh, like uh, the model works pretty well, right? Um, and then as soon as we add the perturbations, so the uh, basically performance uh, uh, degrades. And there are some, like, uh, as we observed, like, uh, in, the, in the examples, like, uh, before, uh, there are some differences across type of, 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 uh, of prompt. And especially uh, as the prompt becomes more complex, so we go from single point to multiple points to box, and then to box plus points, uh, like uh, the effectiveness of the attacks uh, kind of gets uh, uh, like lower, uh, which kind of I guess makes sense, and also clean performance improves. Right? But overall, uh, uh, we are able to reduce like uh, quite significantly the performance uh, across all all types of prompts. <coughs> okay. And uh, yeah, the, the, this was done, like all the attacks haven't seen any kind of prompt, right? So this is quite uh, uh, not uh, Okay, so far uh, I, uh, we have um, considered the image-specific attacks, so we create a perturbation for each image. Uh, but um, maybe more interesting and like more challenging uh, setting is uh, uni the of universal perturbations. So we want to have a single perturbation, which we can apply to uh, any image, and uh, it will basically uh, lead to some incorrect masks. Uh, clearly, this reduces uh, well, to zero kind of the computational cost of the attack, right? Because uh, you have completed it once, and then you can reuse it for any image and any prompt. Um, so, and the problem is pretty similar to the one uh, we had for image-specific attacks. Just this time, we optimize uh, uh, the L2, so the distortion of the feature embedding. Uh, for not just for one image, but on a batch of images. And the one uh, like caveat is that images might have uh, uh, different uh, resolutions, right? So we cannot uh, like straightforwardly apply uh, a perturbation to, to different images. Uh, so what we do is just we fix the size of the perturbation to some like uh, meaningful uh, dimension. And then we rescale it uh, with some like differentiable operation uh, um, to the size of each image uh, individually, right? So uh, since like this transformation G is like differentiable, we can optimize the attack through uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, int like interpolation, rescaling operation. And the setup is, uh, okay, here we need a bit, uh, so the problem is still solved with PGD, we need a bit more steps because it's more challenging, and we use 100 training images, so we basically generated these, uh, these uh, universal perturbations on uh, 100 images, and uh, uh, we don't optimize uh, this loss at every uh, gradient step on the, all the 100 images, because uh, otherwise it would be easier to, to overfit. But basically, at each iteration, uh, we we compute the loss and then like the gradient update on just ten random images, so kind of to uh, improve a generalization to unseen images. And then uh, how we test this uh, is actually okay. We can just check the success on the training images, but that's not really 
uh, the most interesting aspect, right, the most the more interesting uh, uh, experiment is to test uh, the same perturbation on unseen images. And these are kind of uh, a bit uh, the results. Uh, okay, just a few examples of uh, which fit into the slide. Um, so here we have the scene images on, on the left, uh, right? So here is the original image. Uh, so these are, yeah, basically these are the training images. Uh, these are the correct uh, predictions, right? And these are the images after adding the perturbations of A to over 255. And uh, so here is the same perturbation uh, and uh, still uh, basically everything kind of, um, almost everything disappears. And uh, uh, clearly, this, this radius is larger than what uh, we used for, uh, or had to use for uh, image-specific perturbations. Uh, uh, but the problem is more difficult, so I, I think it makes sense. Um, and then uh, we, these are unseen images, so uh, we apply the same perturbation on, on like a new batch of, of, of test images. And we see that even this case, uh, it works, so it's not maybe super clear from these examples, but it works a bit worse, I would say, from the, from the training images, but still generalizes like to a non-trivial degree. Uh, so this is interesting, right, because uh, because basically, uh, yeah, you can imagine, it, it reduces the cost of the attacks uh, to kind of zero, uh, uh, because it's just a fixed uh, uh, perturbation. Yeah, thanks for the attention. <laughs>